Assalamualaikum, good morning to my students under CA2, which is non-institutional correction, uh, the third year criminology of the Khadija Muhammad Islamic Academy. So, this is the first part of the midterm. So, uh, previously we have discussed the uh, evolution of uh, prison, prison system in the Philippines, the evolution of correctional administration, the evolution how the famous personalities uh, evolved in the uh, history of the correction uh, facilities, correction administration. So now we will proceed with the uh, lesson proper in order for us to understand the non-institutional correction because the first part which is the prelim is more on the institutional corrections so this subject is you will already know already knew that it is 10 percent in the board examination so uh, during the prelim examination if you notice that i didn't provide an ac form because i i have an assurance that most of you had if not uh, watch my videos for uh, reference so uh, if there are ambiguities in my explanation to my explanation during the tenure of the lesson proper for example for 3 and 30 minutes meron kayong tinaintindihan please free to ask and evaluate me for example sabihin mo sir mali yung pagkakasabi mo niyan uh, para maintindihan ko at saka para maganda yung flow ng ating uh, communication, interaction. Because during this uh, 21st century, parati itong sinasabi sa meeting na uh, hindi na hindi na traditional yung pagtuturo because ang nangyayari is teacher and learner are helping to uh, formulate an educational system wherein uh, dapat natututo ang student at saka natututo ang student sa pamamagitan ng pagtulong ng teacher at saka nakakatulong ang estudyante sa pamamagitan ng pagsunod doon at saka kung ano man yung mga dapat pang i-inculcate sa estudyante for example si estudyante nakikinig sa mga lesson uh, nagtatanong nag-evaluate tapos kami naman is nagbibigay kami ng enough knowledge for example sa uh, sa time namin Sinasabi para dito, during our time, natatakot kami magtanong sa teacher. Natatanong kami mag-PM. Uh, kapag madaanan namin yan sa mga kalsada o kaya kung sa man dyan, nahihiya kami, kinatatakutan. Unless, na importante talaga o mag-approach kami. Pero ngayon, napaka, ano na, napaka hindi na sensitibo yung pagiging student at saka teacher. So, kinakailangan natin magkaroon ng uh, good rapport and good communication in order for us to make a uh, good product for example gusto namin maging uh, well equipped kayo sa lahat maging matalino kayo at saka magamit ninyo yung natutunan niyo at the end of the day and mind you the uh, grading system na pinapatupad natin is nakaangkla doon sa rating na binibigay ng uh, board board for example 75%. So, I know mo, most of you hindi umabot ng 65%. So, ang gusto na, ang gusto, uh, hindi 75% rather. So, papasa ko kayo, pinasa ko kayo ngayon, pero sa midterm, if ever, hindi niyo pa gawin yung trabaho ninyo bilang estudyante dahil sa mga maraming dahilan, kasi meron tayong quote na kapag gusto, maraming paraan, pag ayaw, maraming dahilan. So, ang maganda nito, Yes, kapag halimbawa, nag-apply kayo, let us say, uh, nakapagtapos ka ng pag-aaral. So, kapag maganda yung records na sa transcript of record mo, records mo, na sa line of nine ng grades mo, madali kang tanggapin. Pero kung halimbawa, ngayon, naging board passer ka na, pero 75-75, there will be a time, mayroong tendencies, na kapag mayroong, mayroong ranking, lalo na sa polis, na may mga... Random, kung saan may bunutan na nangyayari kapag sobra yung, sobra yung aplikante. 
So kapag hindi ka nandoon sa ranking, so hindi line of nine yung mga grids mo, so masasali ka doon sa random na bubunutin. So yun yung mga uh, magandang halimbawa kung bakit kailangan nating mag-aral. Mag-aral na mayroon kang natutunan. So the module is a compilation uh, of non-institutional corrections by Delmer A. Mondido, a registered criminologist, master in criminology. So uh, this was published and no this is a review class uh, on 2010-2011. So we will use his uh dito, his uh, transcript halimbawa mayroon siyang mga halimbawa dito. So we will use his Uh, compilation para lalo natin maintindihan kung paano nag-evolve ang non-institutional correction. So let's let's classify the three major uh, privileges. If not uh, uh, binibigay doon sa mga mga nakakulong. Halimbawa, meron tayong parole, provision and pardon. So in order for us to understand and comprehend on the subject three Three, uh, three privileges given to prisoner. So, kinakailangan muna natin maintindihan kung sino-sino yung mga famous personalities involved in this parole, pro, uh, par, provision, and pardon. So, the history of parole. <clears throat> Let's proceed with the parole. <clears throat> so, in the board examination, if you notice pagdating nyo dun, if you will notice, for example, uh, karamihan hindi uh, karamihan na lumalabas is pangalan. So kapag hindi mo alam kung saan siya nanggaling bansa, kung saan kung kailan siya nag-exist, kailan niya uh, kailan siya nakapag-formulate ng theory niya, so hindi mo talaga ma masasagot 'yan. So let's proceed with Captain Alexander Maconoche. He is an Englishman. He is an Englishman was then in charge of the birth of the British Penal Colony. So Englishman, a British A penal colony in North Fork Island where its prisoners were transported on 1840. So, siya yung nag-in charge ng uh, penal colony na, ng North Fork Island kung saan ginatransport, natatransport yung mga prisoner nila during 1840. Makanochi assumed his post in North Fork Island. The conditions were so bad, prisoners would be happy if they are dying. Inmates fights left more dead dead than injured diseases are very rampant sanitation and physical facilities were not conducive so during uh, during sa time na hindi pa siya nakaka-assume sa trabaho niya bilang uh, uh, dito, uh, bilang uh, let us say bilang warden sa Norfolk Island so he is uh, no no before siya uh, maging administrator ng penal colony in Norfolk Island ang condition doon is napaka napaka hirap. Uh, gusto na lamang mamatay ng mga prisoners because of the uh, injustices na nangyayari sa loob at saka hindi maganda yung kapaligiran which is hindi conducive sa tao dahil parang uh, uh, sa mga baboy na yung lugar nila kung makikita nyo sa mga penal institution natin o kaya dito sa uh, provincial jail na uh, kahit na malinis pero napakasangsang ang amoy because of the maraming gumagamit at saka mabaho masyado okay makonochi develop a system which punishments of one's crime committed are still maintained but the process of reform were provided to the offenders so sa kanya nagdevelop siya ng system kung saan kung ano yung ginawa mo na ginawa mo na crime is mayroon siyang uh, mayroon siyang uh, kalakip na punishment So, prisoners were encouraged good behavior for them to gain incentives that would lead to their early release. So, dito, binibigyan ng pagkakataon ng isang prisoner, ang isang bilanggo na uh, gumawa ng maganda sa loob ng kulungan para at the end of the day, yung good gain incentives, the end of the day, ikakalculate yan na ito magandang mga records mo sa loob. So, pwede kang i-release sa pamamagitan ng parol. This concept was called the Marx system. Okay, Marx system, Marx system was formulated by Captain Alexander Makonoche. Always remember this one. Prisoners could earn enough credits to buy their freedom. Their bad behavior removes the mark they have already gained, while 
acceptable behaviors were added to the numbers of marks earned. So, sinasabi nating mark system because uh, sa record ng isang bilanggo, nilalagay doon kung ano na yung mga natapos niya sa loob ng kulungan, ano yung mga magandang behavior na nag, uh, nagigain niya, for example. So, the mark system made possible reformation of offenders wherein prisoners could have an early release. So, kapag ang isang uh, bilanggo is fully reformed na, maganda na yung kanyang behavior, pwede na siyang ilabas sa labas ng kulungan. So, yun, uh, i-release siya sa pamagitan ng parol. Mind you, para maintindihan natin, ang parol is a temporary freedom. Temporary freedom, bakit? bakit? Dahil kapag pinalabas ka, gumawa ka ng krimen ka agad-agad dyan, so diretso ka, uh, ibabalik sa kulungan. Bakit? Dahil mayroon ka pang hindi nasaserve na sentensya. For example, ang definition ng parole is uh, at least serve part uh, of his sentence. For example, ang isang inmate nakaserve ng uh, kalahati doon sa kanyang sentence. Halimbawa, 20 years, 10 years, 20 years, tapos nakaserve siya ng 10 years, so doon pwede siyang um, uh, mag-apply ng parole provided na mayroon siyang good behavior. Yan ang halimbawa. This concept done by Makonochi was considered the first form of indeterminate sentencing prior to Makonochi's arrival at Norfolk Island. So this is an indeterminate sentencing. Inmates have been sentenced to determinate sentence where a fixed number of years were set for them to serve and upon reaching the fixed years, that's the only time they are released. So, uh, dati, ang nangyayari, kapag binigyan ka ng tawag dito, binigyan ka ng sentensya, verdict na 20 years, so hanggat hindi mo na tatapos yun, so hindi ka makakalabas. So, yun ang sinasabi natin, determinate sentence. Wherein, lumabas in determinate sentencing, kung saan uh, although, nandyan sa, nandyan sa uh, final verdict mo na 20 years, 30 years, pero because of your good behavior sa loob ng kulungan, so papalabasin ka. As long as na-meet mo yung mga requirements. So, take note. You are not, for example, pinalabas ka sa labas ng kulungan, you are, madidiscuss din natin ito, you are not allowed to uh, to be admitted in the government service. For example, hindi ka po pwede pumunta sa mga bars, mga institution na may mga L-refute. Halimbawa, hindi ka rin pwede mag-abroad, hindi ka po pwede komandidato. Yan yung mga, uh, tawag dyan, hindi po pwede uh, gawin mo while nasa, log, uh, nasa labas ka ng kulungan. Nasa labas, nasa community ka, yan ang gusto kong iparating. Okay? Since Makonochi was the one who first initiated the indeterminate sentence concept, which is now being practiced as parole, he won the title Father of Parole. So if you counter the word, who, uh, for example, who, uh, tanong is, who is the father of parole? So ang sagot is Alexander Makonochi. So always remember, on 1844, Makonochi was relieved of his duties as warden, o oh, tama kanina yung sinabi natin na he is a warden, and was charged for coddling inmates because according to the leaders of England, the method used by Makonochi was too lenient. So, tinanggal siya because of mga, may mga issues. Okay, Sir Walton Crofton. So, lumabas si Sir Walter Crofton. He was the chairman of the board of prison in Ireland. So, kapag narinig natin si Sir Walter Crofton, uh, chairman of the board of prison in Ireland. So, yun lang yung tatanda natin. He was influenced by Makonochi's efforts of early release. So, ang nag kapag influence sa kanya para uh, mabawasan yung mga bilanggo. So, yung concept ni Makonochi na because of the good behavior, bibigay natin sila ng incentive, bibilangin ang kanilang mga nagawa. So, doon ibabase kung palalabasin ba sila, reform na ba sila. So, kay Sir Crofton Wal Walter, Walter Crofton, Believe that the amount of time served should be released to the prisoner's reformation and Crofton also believe that convicts could not be rehabilitated without successful reintegration into the community. Ang paniniwala naman ni Sir Walter Crofton, so hindi magiging reform, hindi natin masasabi na ang tao ay nagsisisi, ang tao ay uh, hindi nagagawa ulit ng masama hanggat hindi natin siya na-integrate sa community, hanggat hindi natin siya na kahalubilo sa community. So, while dito while nasa while meron kang verdict bilanggo ka bilanggo ka pero nasa loob ka ng 
uh, prison uh, institution nasa loob ka ng community yun na nga subject for such restriction and limitation okay on 1854 Crofton established the Irish concept of ticket of leave system where offenders could earn their early release by stages sa kanya naman naglabas siya ng ticket of leave system so ano-ano yung naka nakapaloob dito so mayroon tayong mga stages the first stage Inmates were held in solitary confinement and performed dull and monotonous work in Mount Joy Prison. So sa first stage, dito nakalagay yung mga bilanggo kung saan solitary confinement. When we say solitary confinement, yung mag-isa. Halimbawa. O kaya, um, hindi sila marami. Tapos pinapagtrabaho siya ng mga, nakaka, yung mga trabaho na paulit-ulit. Uh, na hindi nakaka-enjoy sa kanila. Okay, second stage, they were assigned to Spike Island where they work on fortifications or public works projects. So, pangalawa naman, yung mga inmates is uh, nilalagay doon sa mga Spike Island. When you say Spike Island is, for example, wala hindi mataong isla, tapos pinapagawa sila ng public works project. For example, pinapatrabaho sa highways, pinapatrabaho sa mga uh, relays, halimbawa, pinapatrabaho sa isang building. So, yun yung mga uh, ginawa nila. Third stage, prisoners were assigned in field units in which they work directly to the community on service or other community projects without an armed guard supervising them. So dito naman masyadong uh, maganda yung pamamalaka dahil halimbawa yung bilanggo nakikipaghalam uh, sa lamuha sa community kung saan nakakatulong sila. Halimbawa mayroong mga uh, seminars na ina-aware yung publiko uh, Information drive, inaware yung publiko na ganito yung mangyayari sa inyo kapag ginawa niyo yung certain na kaso, halimbawa. So, nagiging role model din sila. Okay, fourth stage, prisoners work in a community without supervision. Uh, oh, wala na talagang nakatingin sa kanila, bahala na sila. Moving freely between prisons and the community. So, kapag gagawa sila ng trabaho sa labas, so wala nang uh, nakabantay, tapos babalik na naman sila sa prison, sa kulungan. So, napakaganda. Fifth stage is prisoners who were able to follow the stages successfully were awarded the ticket of leave. So kung sino man yung, sa pangalimang stages, kung sino man yung maganda yung mga uh, performance, uh, hindi sila nakaka-violate sa binibigay ng, ng prison, uh, prison policies, so ang nangyayari, doon na sila bibigay ng ticket of leave. So ticket of leave is palalabasin ka na hindi mo pa natatapos yung uh, sentensya mo. Okay, 